With temperatures in the 10s and 20s right now throughout most of the United States, it's a perfect time to stay in and make chili. Welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, a channel serving up your favorite restaurant recipes right in your very own kitchen. And of course, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make the original chili from Chili's Bar and Grill. Now, even though Chili's Bar and Grill refers to theirs as the original chili, we all know that it's not the original chili, like as in the original sin. It's not the world's first chili, but they claim that they are known for their chili. So let's go ahead and get into this and see for ourselves if their chili is as good as they say it is. There's a lot of use of the words chili in this monologue. <laughs> I'm making chili from chilies, so it's kind of like unavoidable, really. Anyways, Chili's version of chili is what's referred to as a Texas con carne. So there are no beans or large chunks of tomato in the recipe. But what you will need for this recipe is two pounds of 80-20 ground beef, onion, a can of tomato paste, canned hatch chilies. You'll need beef broth, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, chili powder, cumin, paprika, and garlic powder. You'll need a little salt, a little pepper, and some cornstarch, and that's it. So let's get started. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna chop our onion. Now you're going to start with a very large yellow onion, and this should equal about one and a half cups once it's all chopped down. I'm gonna put it on the weight scale here, and it says that it's about three quarters of a pound. So just make sure that it's a nice large yellow onion, about three quarters of a pound. You can use the weight scale at the grocery store if you don't happen to have a home weight. And I'm going to chop the onion down in my food processor. I think that the food processor is going to give you a little bit more consistency in the chop. It's going to make it finer and it's a lot easier too. And I would like to thank Rada Cutlery for sending me a new set of chef knives. These have quickly become my favorite knives in the kitchen and I use them all the time. So thank you, Rada Cutlery. This is the texture and the size of the dice that you're looking for with the onion. It's not so fine as to be a paste, but it's a lot finer of a chop than you would get if you were hand chopping. And now in a very large stock pot with your heat source on high, add only one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. The fat content on the meat that we're going to be using is an 80-20, so it does have a little bit more fat in it than a leaner ground beef. So you don't want to go crazy with the olive oil because you're going to extract a lot of fat once we brown the meat. Once your oil begins to shimmer, add two pounds of 80-20 ground beef. Break up the ground beef until it becomes very loose and allow the meat to cook until it gets a nice brown color on it. Once the ground beef has a nice brown color to it, using a slotted spoon, remove it from the pan. Discard all of this excess fat, reserving only one tablespoon. Once you've discarded the fat, reserving one tablespoon, add in your chopped onions. Evenly distribute the onions on the bottom of the pan and allow them to get a nice golden color. Once the onions start to get a nice color on them, add in a six ounce can of tomato paste. And stir the onions and the tomato paste until well incorporated. Next, add four cups of beef broth and two four ounce cans or one cup of diced hatch chilies, juice and all. Now add in one third of a cup of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one and a half teaspoons of regular paprika, not smoked, a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Next add two teaspoons of kosher salt, and six to eight cranks of cracked black pepper. Turn your heat down to low and whisk in three tablespoons of cornstarch. Now add back in your ground beef, including any of the reserved juices. Finally, add in one and a half cups of water. Cover the chili and allow the chili to simmer for about one hour, stirring frequently. 
I've had this chili on simmer for about an hour and it's reduced by, I would say about 20%. You can see along the edge of the pan how much it's been reduced. And that's what you're looking for because in the simmering and the reduction is where you get that nice thick consistency. And if you drained off all of the beef fat, leaving only about one tablespoon when you sauteed the onions, you shouldn't have to skim this. It shouldn't look greasy at all, meaning there shouldn't be any pools of grease on top of it. So this is perfect. But I am gonna taste it just to make sure that it doesn't need anything else. Maybe a little more salt, a little more pepper, or something like that. This tastes to me exactly like Chili's original chili. And then how they serve it at Chili's restaurant is they top it with some grated cheddar cheese and some fried tortilla strips. So let's go ahead and do that. And then now that it has its fixings on it, I'm gonna give it its final moment of truth. That's good. It's really good. That's really good. Personally, I like beans in my chili. And if you do too, there's nothing wrong with throwing a can of kidney beans in there. I mean, it's your chili, right? Eat it the way that you wanna eat it. If you do decide to put kidney beans in yours, I recommend rinsing and draining them first and then add them at the very end, like the last five or 10 minutes of simmering because you don't want them to get mushy, you know? Yeah, nobody wants mushy. If you have a restaurant or a recipe that you would like me to feature in an upcoming episode, then go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. I promise I'll take a look at it. I've got a list that's about this thick, but I add to it every single episode. But make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when your episode comes up, you'll be notified. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now go make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers, I love y'all. And for more great recipes, check out right here.